So welcome to this oral session talk um, belonging to poster 738 on Monday and Tuesday, in which we address structural and functional MRI and their predictive value for chronological age and memory performance. So our research starts from the observation that although cognitive performance generally declines with increasing age, as is here shown for memory performance, some older adults show memory performance comparable to that of young subjects. And these individuals are typically called successful agers. It is yet to be uh, revealed why successful agers are so successful. Um, one possible explanation is that um, there is higher brain structural integrity in these individuals as compared to um, other subjects who are more strongly suffering from brain-related atrophy. So this could be called brain maintenance. Alternatively, the brain might uh, simply recruit existing um, resources more efficiently or even employ compensatory cognitive strategies. This could be termed cognitive reserve. And our assumption is that although we cannot strictly decide between these theories, we can at least provide some evidence by testing the predictions that these theories make. Because according to the brain maintenance view, differences in memory performance within the older subjects should co-occur with differences in structure MRI. Whereas according to the cognitive reserve theory, differences in memory performance should correlate with differences in functional MRI responses. So we measured functional MRI brain activity of young and older subjects why they were seeing either novel images, which they had not previously seen, or one out of two master images, which were pre-familiarized and thus known to the subject. In a subsequent memory test, the subjects were then shown all the old items, which they had seen in the encoding session, as well as several new images. And they were asked to provide a, um, to, to rate these images on a five point scale, ranging from one for this item is definitely new to me, up to five for I've definitely seen this item before. So this allows to categorize encoding events based on the retrieval responses. And then um, we can infer on fMRI activity differences with respect to novelty processing by contrasting um, novel with familiar images and um, to infer on subsequent memory effects by contrasting remembered with forgotten items, which is here shown on the left and right respectively. In previous work, we have shown how from these fMRI contrasts, we can um, derive summary statistics indicating either deviation or similarity of a given older subject from prototypical activations seen in young subjects. One of these scores is the so-called fate score, which subtracts for a given contrast, the average activity um, within a predefined brain mask from the average activity outside this mask. We have developed an improved statistic called the same score, uh, which directly operates on activity differences, which also takes into account the deactivations on the respective contrast, and which factors in the uh, variability of the young subjects used as a reference sum. So we have fMRI contrasts indicating neural correlates of memory formation. From these contrasts, we can derive a single value fMRI scores. We have the behavioral data for all subjects, that is how often they responded one to five with respect to old, versus new items. And from each subject, we also acquired structural MRI scan from which we extracted voxelwise gray matter volume and a resting state MRI session from which we extracted voxelwise mean percent of amplitude fluctuations or M per F in short. So we used these feature sets to predict uh, several variables of interest, namely age group, that is whether a subject was young or old, chronological age in years, 
and memory performance measured as area under the curve in the subsequent memory test. We used um, support vector classification with tenfold cross validation for the discrete variable age group and support vector regression for the continuous variables age and memory. First, we assured that age group can be classified from all of these variables. Um, and here we are already seeing clear hierarchy from behavioral over functional up to structural information. If we then look at the continuous variables, chronological age and memory performance, we find that within the older subjects here shown on the right, chronological age is best predicted from structure MRI and resting state fMRI, which are shown in green and cyan. However, these two have no predictive value with respect to memory performance in the older subjects, which in turn is best predicted by functional MRI contrasts and especially um, fMRI summary statistics or single value fMRI score, which are here shown in blue and magenta. So in order to follow up on this finding, we uh, performed a subgroup analysis within the older subjects and partitioned them based on either chronological age or based on memory performance. And from these partitions, we took the lowermost and the uppermost quartile and performed a true group comparison within the, within the older subjects. So this revealed a double dissociation between memory versus age on the one hand and functional versus structure MRI on the other hand, in a sense that when partitioning older subjects by chronological age, there are no significant effects with respect to functional MRI, but strong differences in gray matter volume. Whereas when partitioning older subjects by memory performance, there are no significant effects with respect to structure MRI, but robust differences in the memory-related brain activity. So to sum up, we found that chronological age is best predicted from structure MRI, but functional MRI is the best predictor for memory performance. Moreover, uh, single value fMRI scores derived from the fMRI contrasts were just as good or even better than taking the whole brain fMRI contrast for predicting memory performance. So taken together, our results suggest that um, superior memory performance in healthy older adults um, is better explained by efficient recruitment of the brain's memory network rather than uh, preserved brain structure. So with that, I wanna say thank you. I'm looking forward to your questions in Glasgow. And if you want to know more, please come to my poster, 738, on Monday and Tuesday. And if you want to know even more, please also check out these other posters from my lab. And thank you again. <laughs>